Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll start by doing model diagnostics where we'll create four plots and look at them and do some interpretation and that will be followed by prediction with the help of the model. Because we'll have many plots, I'm going to use PAR. We'll make two by two plots. We'll have two plots each in two rows and then we plot the model. So we have fitted value versus residuals. We look for three things in this plot. The first one is that this red line should be horizontal to x-axis and should be close to zero. So if you compare this to the ideal line here, this dotted line which is faintly visible, so we see that the red line doesn't deviate very much from that. So on that count, it seems okay. Now the second important thing is that these dots should be scattered around this red line more or less evenly forming a rectangular band. So that will indicate that the variances of the error terms are more or less equal. Definitely this model has some issues there. The third important thing this graph tells us is whether there are any outliers. So you will notice that there is a point here referring to data point 1620, another one 1255 and then 688. These are sort of outliers in our data. With real data sets, we may not get a situation where we get a perfect residual versus fitted plot, but it gives some indication if the model can be further improved. So you have a normal probability plot. And in fact, uh, in these plots, we give more weightage to central points than the extreme points because there could be a lot of variability around extreme points. So an ideal situation will be when all the residuals line up on this dotted line from left to right. However, in practice, we rarely get a perfect situation. Scale location plot has fitted values on x-axis. So the main purpose of this plot is to check if the residuals are spread equally along various values of predictors. It helps us to check the assumption of equal variance, also called homoscedasticity. In this plot, we need to look at values that are outside the dotted lines, especially towards the right upper corner and right lower corner. So the dashed lines are Cook's distance. And if we have points which are outside Cook's distance, so those data points uh, do have a big impact on regression outcome. And if these data points are excluded, the regression results will be different. So usually with data, it may not be possible to get the perfect situation with these uh, plots, but they give some indication. And those indications will help us to improve our model. For example, one thing we know is that the values of labor costs and labor hours are more concentrated towards lower values and we have less and less data points for higher values. One way to overcome that problem may be to do a log-log transformation where you take log of x-axis and log of y-axis, in this case labor hours and labor cost and then do the scatter plot and also then do the regression analysis, that's likely to have an improved pattern on these uh, diagnostics plots. If you want to look at what this 1620th value is, so this is in the vehicle data and we want to look at 1620 and all columns. So this failure occurred after 11 months. Mileage at failure was 15,565 miles. What stands out is that the cost is really very high because you can see this is very far away from normal data points. The labor cost was 3,234.41 and also material cost, so items or parts that were replaced, uh, that cost itself is more than 2,000. So you can see labor plus uh, material cost is more than 5,000. So this is a very expensive repair and it will be interesting for the company 
which uh, monitors this data to look into and see whether this is a genuine repair or maybe there is a mistake or an error. Now once we have the model, this model can be used for making predictions. So we can make use of predict command, use the model and let's use testing data. So this testing data has not been seen by the model. We will store predictions in PRED. Let's look at some values of this PRED and we can compare this with the values in the testing data set. If you look at the first prediction, labor cost is estimated to be $329.47. And if you look at the actual labor cost, it is about $328.66. So this is quite close to the predicted value. So difference is about $1, so not that bad. Second prediction is $147.37 compared to actual value of $116, so slightly off. Then we have 227, 220, about $7 difference. So there are occasions when the predictions are pretty close and there are some occasions where the differences are more. If you want to make a prediction for a single data point, so we can use predict and our model and we can provide a data frame where LH equals 10. So if labor hours is 10, based on this model, what should be labor cost? If you run this line, it says that if labor hours is 10, the predicted labor cost is about $730.08. So this is how we can make a prediction using the model. In the next video, we are going to look at some multicollinearity issues that occur when we are doing regression analysis.